you're never like confined to a building so I feel like you can move your living space around which is a really cool thing to do you'd like to be parked somewhere with like a little bit more sunshine or maybe closer to the ocean or maybe somewhere that's quieter you get that choice and so it really makes you aware that when you live in an apartment or a basement suite or a house you're, you're kind of stuck in that one spot my name is Katie and I'm Rose uh, the make of the vehicle is a 1994 Ford E350 with a 7.0 liter V8 international engine. We kind of decked out the inside and redid some stuff in the engine just to make it a little bit more reliable. Here we have a co-pilot chair that's installed through the floor. This is our AC unit. When we're traveling in hot spaces, there's a custom-made exhaust here and we can turn it on using the inverter or using the generator and uh, we could even have it running while we're driving and it'll just use the bus batteries and the alternator recharge the batteries. Here we have our little garden area. We've got a dresser for clothes and toiletries and that sort of thing. We have the uh, eating area here. So this tree actually came from uh, North Carolina. Um, it was cut down and this wood is walnut. Um, it's the same wood as we have over here, where we left this live, live edge, and we just cut it up and kind of used it for different pieces um, in the bus. And we found that it was kind of cool to make it match, but also cool that you can like reuse pieces of wood that would otherwise go to waste from a tree falling down. These are just the maps of the U.S., which is uh, where we were traveling. So it was kind of useful to come over here. And this one's also got the topography on it, so... A really kind of unique thing about the older buses is that a lot of them are made with uh, metal instead of fiberglass. So um, this whole like piece here is magnetic and we really <laughs> use that to our advantage. Um, we have curtains that we put up. We have like a decorative fabric on the outside, an insulation on the inside, and then a blackout fabric that's facing outward. So. When you put all the curtains, there's a curtain for every single window. When you put all of them up, it really kind of makes the place cozy. And um, it also does a good job in insulating, insulating it and like just keeping the heat or the cold out. One of the good things about having a school bus is there's so many windows and the height. So like it feels super open. But the bad thing about having so many windows and the height is that it doesn't hold heat very well. So in this corner of the bus, we have our cooking and um, a little bit of storage as well. So it was like the, the cooking area. Um, so here we've got like um, a stove that's actually like um, held against the side of the bus with magnets, like a very pretty powerful magnet. Um, and then we've got a, a small little fridge here that um, Katie got off Craigslist for like $10 or something like that. I made these kind of straps that um, that holds on to the, to the legs of the table there and just with Velcro, um, once it's attached, it just keeps everything in because most of the time things don't move around but if we take like a, a sharp corner or if like you stop suddenly then um, things can kind of can follow pretty easily. Um, school buses are nice because they have, they tend to have a few cubbies whether it be on the inside up here or beneath the skirt or just like extra little built-in places of storage that really work nicely with the way the bus is designed. And so when you're just lounging around or being a co-pilot and enjoying, you know, the ride, you can reach up here and uh, pick a book out of our library. We keep our maps, our art supplies, um, our uh, little, we've been collecting stickers from the places that we go. This is the bed part and it pulls out. And uh, these legs here will fold down and it'll pull out all the way and uh, you can bring it up and put it on these metal tabs and it will extend into a full size bed and then slide back and it's nice and clean. Turns into a couch. Um, this mattress is uh, full size from Ikea and it's just folded on top of itself so it kind of gives you that extra padding that a couch would. Access to a bathroom is actually 
one of the biggest challenges of living in this kind of space, um, particularly because we don't have anything built in to to the bus. Um, so, like, we often try and kind of plan our day so that we'll be near, like, um, a park or a public restroom of some kind. Um, there was, uh, there was, like, a week that we spent in LA, and uh, during that time we park near, like, a, like, a Walgreens, and so every night we can just make sure to go to the bathroom and brush our teeth before 10 p.m. Um, so it definitely kind of limits you in some ways. And we don't have, like, a gray water or black water system. It's found that that's, like, a little simpler, um, but that's definitely something that would be on the list. I would definitely want something that, uh, it, it doesn't have to be fancy, it could be even like a gravity sort of system, especially when cooking, um, running yeah. water would be useful. Yeah, I think, yeah, like running water and just having like a sink would actually be really nice, maybe even more than a bathroom, actually. Um, you don't realize actually how often you might rinse your hands when you're cooking. A sink over a toilet actually would be, yeah, would be an upgrade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that for me personally, I, I think yeah. I'd benefit from. Security was definitely something that we uh, put up front, and that's why we kind of created these curtains with that blackout fabric. And um, another thing that we we wanted to be sure is that we can lock all the doors. And this is a emergency exit, so normally. Yeah, uh, this is not here and uh, you'd be able to open it in an emergency from either side but because we wanted to be able to be locked in or lock ourselves in or other people out um, we built this little piece that just slides up and goes over that and it's a really solid metal handle and a really solid door and um, I think you'd need something pretty extreme to break it open after closing it. We built this bumper on the back and it extends the bus to 20 feet which is typically the maximum length for like a small camper van in most um, camp or parks or RV places. Um, so we want to keep within that 20 foot limit and uh, we have this is where we put the generator so we can have the generator running outside on the, on the uh, step there. And then I also keep all the tools that I use when I'm working on the bus, doing an oil change on the road, fixing a leak, something like that. Um, I'll keep them in here. And it's uh, got off Craigslist. It's like an industrial shipping box. Um, and it's been great. And then just put some chains on it so no one can walk away with it. I think half of the reason why I wanted a bus uh, was because I wanted to have the experience of redoing the inside, kind of learning about engine mechanics, learning about carpentry. You kind of learn a little bit of everything. You learn a little bit of uh, uh, welding or like just kind of making things work. Uh, you get to be really creative in uh, how you decide to do things and it can kind of be become your own vehicle in a sense, which is a little bit different from an RV. One benefit I can think of is uh, you could uh, save money. Um, you could also not save money. Uh, it's kind of like up to you, the level that you would want to take it. You know, if you wanted to stay in a campsite with a hookup like every single night, like that would add up, especially if you're doing a long trip. But um, just as far as like city or like just lookouts or scenic roads, Walmarts, that sort of thing, you can definitely save money um, when you travel. It doesn't have to be like super expensive and I think you can do it for a reasonably long time without any income or um, with very minimal income, you can make mm -hmm. it a lifestyle. Um, anyone could. You have like your home with you. So it's kind of like a comfort to like come home like after a long day or whatever. It's kind of nice to be able to travel to all these different places yet still like come home in a sense. and just be able to kind of relax like it's not quite the same like a hotel room or mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know exactly, something yeah. someone else's house if you're like staying at an airbnb or even with a friend like it's just it's nice to come home like but have home like move with you and like look out the window and see something different every day one challenge that i think we both found of living in um in a van or in a bus is that 
there's kind of a lack of privacy sometimes so we might park somewhere and we've yeah we've got our space here which which feels like our home and maybe we want maybe we want to have the windows open or the back door open and when people walk by they'll start kind of like looking in and you sort of feel kind of vulnerable in a way like <laughs> stop looking into my home like you know you wouldn't peek into somebody's apartment window so um that's kind of uh something that's that i think is something to get used to and we also talked about that idea of space right and like Mm. do are you allowed in the space that you're parked in you know um like is the society say that that is your space or not your space we've never had many problems but i think that could definitely can be a challenge that you don't feel that you have the same right to be in certain public spaces as other people who um, who might be living in a more conventional kind of way. We've never had anybody like overtly comment to us that um, we're not welcome somewhere or that um, made us feel really stigmatized, but I think it's just like an awareness that you have. So I actually um, bought the bus um, through just like a guy selling it on the side of the road um, and it had a, a little bit of trouble like mechanically but it wasn't uh, it was nothing really to complain about it was there was a few issues with the fuel system that I ended up having to f- fix and redo but if you don't like that if it's not working for you if something's bad then this part doesn't really matter the inside doesn't matter um, it, it would be better to do it that way than the reverse where you have this beautiful inside but the you know you're gonna have to do something really costly on the engine and it's Mm. just not worth it. The initial investment for this bus was I think I paid um, 2700 US dollars. Yeah the initial cost was not much but then when you get into replacing all the things or um, building the inside out you get into money but you also you get into time um, it takes a lot of time, and you have to think about like the opportunity cost of like what you could have done with that time working or doing something else. So I think in the end, like it might be even more costly than you, you initially think. I think and, if uh, you if you want to live in a bus or a van full time, it is a big investment at the outset. But if you do it for a year, two years, it can really pay off because you're not having to pay for rent. Um, yeah. Especially in a city. Right? Yeah, especially in a city where you can be more anonymous and it's easier to park um, um, in places for free. Most things I either made or got at Goodwill or created with something else. I think living in a van has really helped with, you know, meeting new people and forming relationships with other people. And um, yeah, I've really, I've really enjoyed like getting to know people or getting to know a side of someone that I didn't through the van or through them asking questions or just in conversation. Yeah, so like when you buy a school bus, it's like really exciting, but then the kind of nitty gritty of ripping out the seats that have been rusted and corroding for the past 24 years becomes kind of a reality. And um, it's pretty, uh, it can be you know, some days are pretty, uh, pretty long, uh, to say the least. It is useful at the beginning to come up with a plan and a design that uh, gives you the kind of space that you that you want or that you need. A lot of like how I design this too um, is I can actually move it around, so I didn't bolt that much to the wall, and I didn't really weld that much to the frame. Yeah, I think I I think I asked people for advice. I found something that I wanted to do. And then I would ask someone that I knew who was good in that. Things often don't go as planned or as you expected. And so if you've got a lot of kind of constraints in your life, or if you're someone who just needs a little bit more certainty, um, then it might not be the way to go. But I think if you're able to to live flexibly, then um, it's a really great experience. At times it was pretty overwhelming uh, to say the least, but it all ended up working out. you get some really great experiences from it. Well, thank you so much for taking a tour of our bus. Um, and if you want to continue following us, uh, we're on Instagram as Busy Bus on the Move. Thanks. <laughs>